Hello and welcome back to Radio 2. We are currently busy with Module 2.9 and we'll be continuing with that today. Um, so this is the fifth lesson of um, the 15 part practical programming and making content series. OK, so we're currently busy with making content and we started speaking about prepping a little bit in the previous lesson when we spoke about storytelling and, and starting to talk about how you would prep for something like that. We ended off the previous lesson with the RIP formula. I'm not sure whether you can remember that, but that was the R for researched, I for internalized, P for performed. And then we briefly looked at further techniques that Johnson um, provided for tips for content creation. And what we looked at was the following technique. So we looked at contrast firstly, where we said, create contrast to add drama in a storyline by putting a personality in an awkward or an unexpected situation then exaggerating the story, okay? So if you're scared of spiders, we'd put you in a room full of spiders. If you're scared of heights, we'd make you bungee jump, stuff like that, okay? Then we mentioned resolving a conflict or a dilemma um, so building up the conflict, then resolving that tension. So think about movies. This is a, used a lot in television sitcoms also, but it also works very well for radio. Thirdly, we spoke about seeking the extreme. So exaggerating topics, ideas, characters, personalities, as well as listeners. And then we spoke about the top 10 lists, about making the top 10 list um, unique to you. So avoiding other people's top 10 lists, but creating a shareable social media worthy segment. Then another technique was to make it a game. Why? Because people of all ages love games. It's one of those things. Games are an important element to add to a presenter's repertoire. Okay. So adding games. We then went on to say add a guest. Uh, to your show. So guests can be really boring on air, unfortunately, but sometimes a topic or an idea calls for having someone external on board to add to your storyline. So if you use if you use guests sparingly and you always ask, um, does having this guest on air add to the entertainment, the education or uh, engaging nature of the content pieces? And you say, yes, you can put that person on air. If no, do not include the guests in the piece. The second last one that we mentioned was discuss your personal life and opinions. A great source of content can come from your own personal life and your own opinions. As long as there's a balance between good and bad personal stories. So just remember to have that balance and to not make your listeners feel excluded. Last one was create unique original content that only you can perform. So the single best source of content is personal experiences and observations from your life. Okay, so that's where we ended it off. And where we're starting today is we're starting by looking at um, characters. So plan to insert the character and the personalities into everything that you prepare, okay? Every character should have a detailed character map that will help align the content with the presenter's character. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through five ways of inserting a personality and characteriz characterization into music radio links specifically. So the first one that we're looking at there now is own the music information. So there's a whole heap of music related information readily available to every single, about every single artist uh, and song. What you don't want uh, to do is to give li the listeners a history lesson or bore them with irrelevant facts about a song or an artist. So, for example, you don't want to say something along the lines of, here's the latest from a young lady that's only 16 years old and already has two platinum albums, and then you play the song. Okay, so instead try and use more... Um, use more information to add a more interesting link that shows off a little bit of your personality also. 
So something along the lines of, what were you doing when you were 16? Um, writing love letters to your first love, cleaning your room, getting grounded for smoking on school. Okay, so maybe that was just me getting busted for smoking. Anyway, you were clearly underachieving because yes, Billie Eilish, for instance, um, is only 16 and has another hit song. Here's the latest song from the new album and then you put in the album's name and the song, okay? So you just kind of rework it to fit your personality better. So don't say the average stuff that we hear on the radio every single day, just rewrite it. Then the second one there, there is using information elements. Research tells us that information about the weather and traffic are still considered important elements on every show. Every station provides this kind of information, but very few stations are doing this well. Most stations merely go through the motions with a stiff official forecast and a report. Instead, uh, look at personalizing these information elements. So look at, for example, saying something along the lines of, you will need a jersey and a coat today. If you were wondering what to wear this morning, a light jersey will be about right. It's going to be chilly, but not cold, around 13 degrees. Okay, so just putting, uh, doing something else with your information elements. So there's a radio station in Seattle in the United States called Spirit 105.3. They are seen as a terrific uh, contemporary Christian radio station. And the host there, her name is Sarah Taylor, um, is the midday personality. She masters the concept of personalizing her content. I'm going to read you a transcript um, about a weather break out loud that she did. And then just take notice of how Sarah personalizes the simple weather forecast. So the forecast reads, you know, when you see a bunch of kids walking to school without a jersey and you're thinking, boy, if only your mother can see you now, now she would be furious. Why? Because it's five degrees this morning, which means, yes, you need a jersey or a coat. Keep warm, please, for the sake of every mother in Seattle. So that's another way of doing it, okay? So again, adding your own personal character to your inserts or to your information elements. Then the next one is a wel welcome or shake hands with listeners. Read messages from your listeners and welcome them to the show by name. Thanks for turning us on this morning. And you, Paula and Shannon, they carpool with their colleagues to Investec and Paula told me that, that Shannon has her hooked on 947. Oh, thanks so much. You made my day. And to her daughter, Chelsea, good luck with that history test today. Okay, so it's just bringing in a little bit of a personal element. If you need to, create or construct these stories. Yes, make them up if you need to. About their lives and about what they're doing today. Make it sound like everyone is listening and that the party is on in your station. So an example of that would be another new listener checking in this morning. Brenda just found us and her colleague listens to us at the hospital and tells us that she can't get enough of the new Maroon 5 song. And she's standing by for whatever promo is coming up in 10 minutes. Brenda, your chance is coming up at 10.48. Plus, here's that Maroon 5 song for you. Another technique is to thank your listener for tuning in. So use your listeners' first names, only first names though, at their locations, um, including the neighborhoods, the schools, communities, businesses, whatever it might be. This is a great way to shake hands with the listener while you're still on air, okay? Because you're giving them, um, because you're making notice of them. Then the next one, take phone calls. Listener interaction, even if it's repurposed from previous days or previous weeks or months even, gives the impression that you're talking to the audience and not at them, which is what we're trying to create at the end of the day. You don't have to turn the show over to them, but having a caller um, on your link can sound quite charming and interactive. Then the fifth way of inserting personality and character into music radio links is with lifestyle comments. Find ways to connect to things happening in the community with simple references that acknowledge that you are one of them. So, for instance, Laura's dragging a little this morning. Get ready for another day of Battle of the Cosmetics counter at this game. She was at the event last night and did not get to sleep until after one. She wants us to help her get moving this morning. Morning. Here's Rihanna. 
So these examples can occur in normal links, but also in ordinary promos um, and while reading liners. Okay, so this is now the first way that we can start with preparing our links, okay? So we can build in this character map. The second thing we'll do is when we're starting to build these links is that we'll build our links with the P2 listener in mind. What is a P2 listener, you might ask? A P2 listener is defined as a listener that considers you to be their second, third, or even fourth choice of a radio station. So you are not their core listenership. You are the radio station that they will tune into when their favorite station has turned them off. So technically, they are sampling your radio station. The goal with this listener is to keep them tuned in and keep them listening for as long as possible. This can be achieved by preparing and planning a show around them specifically. So let's look at how this can be done. Firstly, front load every link creatively. You can do this either by always branding the show at the station, so saying the station's name in every link, or by focusing on the hook. So that first seven to 14 seconds, or what did we say in the previous link? Actually eight seconds, in order to keep your listener intrigued. The second thing that you can do is you can let the audience get to know you. Ask yourself, why would the audience care about you if they don't even know you? Why would anyone care about you if they don't know you? They won't, eh? They need to get to know you to care about you. You can make the audience care by making sure they get to know you, by making the imaging and the production of the show talk to the presenter's personality, okay? So you're making it around you or you're building it around you by making sure the imaging tells the story of the show and includes details from the character maps, okay? You can make new listeners care by providing personal content that provides insight about yourself, about your emotional triggers. Um, for example, how do you feel about something or what is your opinion about something, okay? And then lastly, you can make them care more by being vulnerable. Um, so telling stories about yourself, your relationships, um, your, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. So be relatable and endearing. So that's all ways that I can let the audience get to know me personally. Because if they get to know me personally, I'll matter to them and they, they'll care about me more. Thirdly, I can build my links with the P2 listener in mind by taking callers. So you do that by getting these callers to call you on your name um, and to reiterate the characters of the show. Okay, so they're giving a little bit more info again. So make sure stories develop across multiple days. So not just a one across one day, okay? This will ensure that listeners come back to your show as you reveal more every day. This gives the P2 listener a reason to keep listening because you're intriguing them. Then the second last one there, tease. Keep the listeners listening for longer. So for example, for another 15 minutes and then get them to come back to your show tomorrow by teasing the content effectively. The last one here, always contextualize. Make sure that you provide a proper context, not only within a link, within the environment in which the show is being broadcast. So how do you do this? How do you make sure that you provide proper context, okay? Because we all know context is important. So um, there are six questions that you should, that a presenter should ask themselves. Um, and this comes from managing radio, okay? Which came out in 2009. And those six questions are, firstly, what sort of a day is it? Second, what is everyone in, in town talking about? The third question, what is today's big news story? Number four, what big event is coming up? Number five, what sports stories are the listeners following? And lastly, what films or television shows do they want to see? Or in our case today, it would be 
what Netflix show do they want to see? Um, or what Netflix series are they watching? What is the newest top 10 movies that are out? So that's how you build a link with the P2 listener in mind, okay? So once you've done this, once you've looked all of this and taken all of this into consideration and started actually building um, your content pieces, so building your links, it's time to put the content into a running order or it's also called a runner, okay? So there's no specific way of doing it or specific style. Different presenters enjoy different types of running orders. Some enjoy the clock on the top of the running order so they can follow the order of the show graphically with written out content pieces below the clocks. Other presenters purely um, work with a written account of every link, okay? So what I'm going to show you now is a very basic uh, template for what that you can use as a runner. So you can see it starts here with the name and the date of a show, um, and then important numbers. So things you'll be reiterating throughout the show. Normally, um, a lot of, so I've previously worked in studios where they had like, where they had a page like this in studio at all times, not with the name of the show, obviously, but with all the important information that you might want on there. So all the numbers, the websites, things about the station, etc. So in this case, you'll put on the telephone number there, the studio telephone number, the WhatsApp number, and an SMS line. Um, you'll put in your website details, things to remember about the show. So if there's anything big happening that you need to um, that you need to keep in mind, you put it there. If there are competitions in the show, you'll put it in here. Now this might seem a little bit more scary, um, but it's not. It's just, so now what we've done is it's been broken down, okay? Into hour one, two, and three. I didn't post the third hour there um, because you get the idea from these two hours, okay? So how are we splitting this now? We're splitting it according to links. So in my first hour here, I'm going to have seven links, okay? My first link at 12 is the news with an intro. And then here you can say, what is it? Is it a promise or a performance with audio? Okay, because something that we'll still talk about is just, you must try to utilize audio pieces as much as possible with your, your promise or your performance, okay? Just to tantalize the listener a little bit more. So then your second link, which will be your first proper link, actually, of the hour, will be at quarter past 12. Again, is it a promise or a performance? And then with an audio piece. At 20, then there's ads. So after that, there's ads. Then at 20 past, there's a brief link again. Again, is it a promise or a performance? The fourth link is at half past. Your fifth link is at 20 to 1. And then number six is at 12 minutes to 1. Number seven is at 2 minutes to 1. Right before the news again at 1, which is the first link of your second hour. And then we do it again. So again, is it a promise or a performance? Quarter past one, promise or a performance? 20 past one. But first, at quarter, after quarter past one's link, there are spots, aka ads. Then at 20 past, promise or a performance with an audio piece. Half past, 22 um, spots, so ads again. 12 minutes to two, ads two minutes to two news third hour okay so there's your running order at all times so these content pieces are now coming from here so these everything in here so here like so the content pieces the links that we are prepping now we are planning to insert characters and pers personalities into everything that we prepare and we're planning to build these links with our p2 listener in mind by looking at all of these and then by considering everything that's important, okay, and then it brings us to this. I have another example here for you. Um, this is an example of a simple run sheet, um, a running order sheet for a 45 minute program, okay. So the name of the program, Time with Farmers, the name of the station you'll put in there, the host, if there's a producer, technician. So this one has a little bit more detail. So in this case, the communication objective to engage women and youth to inform them of all the opportunities within the guinea fowl value chain. Okay. So this one you'll see is a bit more in details in the sense of they tell you how long everything will be. 
they tell you the firstly they'll tell you the time so how long your links will be is it live or is it pre-recorded what is the topic what is the format um, who will be doing it and then what time is it when you're done so starting there the first one is 30 seconds okay it's a produced segment with your tune um, and the technician will play it so the first one is your intro in essence okay so then there's a two minute link live link as you can see where the presenter will make welcome remarks introduce the topics of the or introduce the topic of the episode mention the studio guests okay so it's purely an intro so when they're done it's supposed to be two and a half minutes past so you can see this is their clock okay it's just structured a bit differently then there'll be a song by the looks of it then, then there's another one minute uh, link and this again, so then there's another one minute link and this is pre-recorded. So you can see it's Vox Pops, okay? So it's been produced and this is about voices from farmers in the Yendi community in the northern region of Ghana, okay? And then the time when you're done should be six and a half minutes past. Then we have an eight minute interview coming up, okay? So one short song after that, because you can see there's a two minute gap. Then it's uh, another link, a live interview with Mr. Whoever, who is a veterinary service officer at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. So it's an information interview. So it's an in-studio, in-person interview, okay, for eight minutes. Um, that's a very strange time. So just to give you an idea, our interviews most of the time are five minutes. You do get shorter interviews as well, but five minutes or the community stations will do 10 or 15 minute interviews also. Then there's another seven minute link. So this is more of a um, this is more of a talk radio station. If you can um, get the feel of that while we're going through, there's not a lot of songs and things happening here, as you can see. Okay, so a lot of talk. Um, seven minutes, a seven minute link again. Um, this is a phone in. So here it seems. So here they're opening it up for you to phone in, and the topic is. What are you learning from this episode? Do you have any questions for Mr. X, who was in our previous interview? Okay. So people that will phone in here is the general public, just to give their input and tell you whether they've learned something in this episode. So now we're already past uh, halfway in the show, okay? The next link we have is 30 seconds. It's market and weather information read from a script by a reporter. And then after that, we have a one minute, one minute produce piece again, where Miss Whoever of Tamale talks about her guinea fowl business. Okay, so it's a storytelling interview. Okay, so here we have an, another one minute live link, but um, here with the timetable, you can see it says nine minutes. So this is a pre recorded piece also. Um, so all in all, this is a 10 minute segment. Okay, so one minute of this 10 minute segment is the host speaking and perhaps introducing this Miss Whoever. Um, and then nine minutes of it is a pre-production pre or pre-recording of Miss Whoever talking of Tamale, talking about her guinea fowl business, okay? So it's seen in this case as a storytelling interview. It's the host and a farmer there. So then we have a three minute link again, which is your closing link for the day, a promo for the next week's episode, etc. So I presume your hook for getting them back in the previous week or in next week's session. And then after that, for 30 seconds, you have your promo or your signature, or whatever, um, your show promo that'll play again. And that'll bring you to the end of that show, okay? So this is just another example of a simple run sheet, okay? Plain and simple, straightforward, but every single thing that you need to know is on the sheet. So you can see the sheet is way more in depth than this one, okay? So obviously here you can make anything um, around how you would want it. I know a lot of presenters would also kind of prep this and then they'd take the music schedule for their show and they'd work their links around that as well. So again, different people do things differently. So with regards to the running order, so those were now two examples that I've shown you. So where else can I learn about run sheets? Here are four different links where you can go and get a little bit more information about these run sheets. So I'm going to show you these sheets now, but before we get into that, just briefly, 
what you'll do before filling this thing in is you'll start, you'll gather all your scripts, um, all your interview questions, any recorded audio that you might have, all music files that you might have access to if you have access to those logs, okay? And you're gonna make sure that, and you need to make sure that all your files are properly named so that it's so that it's easy for you to find them wherever you upload them. Remember that um, a showrunner is not something that you need to start from scratch each, each week. Rather, it serves as a guide for you to help you plan your show. So there are certain things that will always stay the same. So the order of your show will obviously stay the same, but you'll update the topics, the names, the formats, things like that. So your show runner, runner will reflect all of these changes, okay? So um, one of the stations where I used to work at, we did show prep a month in advance, a month in advance. So all your specific set features, let's say a music feature, whatever it might be, you would fill that in a month in advance so that everyone knows what the other shows are doing in those specific features so that things don't overlap, okay? And then use your clock during the program. A clock is an important component of the showrunner. Okay, it helps you to stay on top of your show. Also remember, the more you understand about the clock, the easier it will be to to produce segments according to how much time you have. Also, hey, um, according to your exact link time time you have that you can talk. So here is one of those examples that I've also put in your PowerPoint. This is from 24 hours in a newsroom. And here they just give you a little bit more information about a running order as well, okay? So they tell you what it is. It's the document redacted by the anchor that allows the engineer to conduct a proper broadcast. Uh, when to write a running order sheet. It's the very last document written before going on air. How to write it. A little bit more info. Here's an example of a running order sheet for a 10 minutes broadcast, okay? so. Here's your source, your content, your running time. So you see there's the jingle, um, then the headlines, then an end of uh, jingle again. Then the news anchor does an intro. Then there's a live phone call. And so it goes on, okay? You'll see as you scroll down, it just gives you all the information about what happens. This is a very packed 10 minutes uh, or 10 minute three seconds, okay? So this was one example. We looked at the next one. So here, uh, PRX just tells you again what clocks are, and you'll see here how the clocks and the showrunners work together. And here are different hour-based clocks, okay, used by NPR specifically. So for instance, if we click on all things considered, you'll see here is the clock broken up completely with everything that's happening in the segment, the music beds, more segments, um, a promo, um, the host, news, music beds, another segment, whatever is happening here, music bed and another segment, etc. Okay, so this is just theirs. And then the last one I want to show you here is quite an old one from the BBC show running order from 20, 2009. Okay, so here you can see again he show run. Um, the show running order for the Chris Moyles show with Vernon. You can see at 6.30, there was news and sport. 6.35, they were broadcasting live. 7 o'clock, news and sport. 7.15, he gave a report on, Dave gave a report on the musical shenanigans recorded last night, or recorded the previous evening. 7.30, news and sport. 7.40, another link with regards to who was the better driver from their trip. So quite a lot of fun elements in here. Eight o'clock news and sport, five minutes past eight, so interlink. Uh, Bernard rubs it in that he was victorious at the racetrack. 20 past eight, they play clips. They play clips from Vernon's big moment with his rendition of MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This. 8.30 news and sport, 8.40, registration doors of the car park, catchphrase, phrases, catchphrase is finally open. So a little bit more information about that. Nine o'clock, the golden hour, part one, where they play you seven songs in a row. Um, then at 9.30, news and sport. 9.35, golden hour, part two, where Vernon's in the mix now. Then this show is done, okay? And here you can just uh, check out the running order archive if you want to get a little bit more information about their running orders. 
Okay, so you should have quite a broad idea about what a running order is now, where it fits in with regards to your show, show prep, how important it is to have the show runner uh, up to date before you go on air, okay, with all your information, because again, the better you are prepared for your show, the better you will be prepared be prepared if anything goes wrong and the more in control you are of your show, okay, which is very important at the end of the day. And the more of these emotive moments you can pull off because you're not struggling and trying to get things last minute because you've done your research on everything, okay? So what I want you to do for me for homework is on page 146. We've previously looked at activity 4A um, number two, okay, so link planning sheet. We looked at that in the previous one. Now we're moving on to the showrunner template, okay? So what I want you to do for me is, I want you to fill in all the elements of the following showrunner sheet for each segment of the show. So if you look at this template of yours, what is it that you put in there, A and B? You put in the name of your show, the date of your show, okay? Then the important numbers. So you'll see, again, it's your studio telephone number, studio WhatsApp number, studio SMS line. That's number C, D, and E. And then if we look at F, G, and H, that's your website, things to remember, competition, okay? And then we look at I there would be your first link, okay? So you're going to put the time in. Obviously, that depends. Um, if we look at our template that we use, it was 12 o'clock, but in your case, it could be 9, it could be three, it could be six, it depends completely on what time your show is starting, okay? And then what is it? Is it is it a top of the hour? So in other words, is it the news? Is it your first intro at five minutes past 12? Um, is it a promise? Is it a performance? Um, is there audio required, okay? So that's what I want you to do for me. I want you to fill that in. So what you're going to, what you should be doing is you should be making use of what you did in number two, okay? Your link planning sheet, because your link planning sheet has got all your information in it, which you then take over to your show runner, okay? And with that, we end off this lesson for today. Uh, please continue to listen to radio and see if you can pick up how much prep someone has put in, okay? What kind of prep did they do? Um, what kind of fubby emotions were used? What is the, was, there, was it an emotive link? Was it not? Did it pull you in at the end of the day? If you were not the core listener, would you still be listening to that radio station again? And with that, I say goodbye. I'll see you again for our next link. Bye.